Hi everyone. Um, thank you for joining me in this way. As some of you have seen the video from last week where I explained that I'm taking this time to ponder and reflect in our Advent season, um, pondering through the Psalms that are, are assigned for each, each Sunday of Advent, since we at St. Paul don't often read the Psalms during, during worship. So I figure this is a good time as well as looking through this Advent study put out by ELCA World Hunger. Um, but yes, feel free to, to share this video with, with others, um, as you wish. And I meant to, to let people know on, at Sunday worship that I was doing this so others can, can join if they missed it. Um, but so please, yeah, please free, feel free to, to get this out to others and remind me if I forget on Sunday to, to let people know that this is available and as a, as a time for, for pondering and reflection in this season of Advent as we are expect, expectantly waiting um, for the coming, coming of the Christ child as we sit in this Advent season and ponder and wait for a new and better future for the world. And just a little caveat, since we are using, since I am using this um, resource from ELCA World Hunger, there will be the hunger focus, the, the focus about raising awareness and working towards ending hungerness in the world. Um, and what what causes, what can cause hung, hunger to be a reality for so many, not just globally, but here in our own communities as well. Um, so I will start with reading the psalm that was assigned for Sunday for this. It was the Peace Sunday. And the psalm for Sunday was 72, Psalm 72, verses 1 through 7. In verses 18 through 19. I'm gonna include verses 12 through 14 since this little Advent study included those as well and they have much food for thought as well. So excerpts from Psalm 72. Give the king your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people and the hills in righteousness. Let him defend the needy among the people, rescue the poor, and crush the oppressor. May he live as long as the sun and moon endure from one generation to another. Let him come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time may the righteous flourish, and let there be an abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. For the king delivers the poor who cry out in distress, distress, the oppressed and those who have no helper. He has compassion on the lowly and poor and preserves the lives of the needy from op from oppression and violence, he redeems their lives, and precious is their blood in his sight. Blessed are you, Lord God, the God of Israel. You alone do wondrous deeds, and blessed be your glorious name forever. And may all the earth be filled with your glory. Amen. Amen. So that, those were excerpts from Psalm 72 as assigned for this past Sunday's reading, the second Sunday of Advent, including a little section in the middle there about, about the king who delivers the needy when they call, and the poor who have no helper, and all of that. So there's there's much to think about in those those verses that I just read. Um, 
there's much about longing, praying for this time of an abundance, an abundance of peace, while also praying for a king to look out for the needy, for the poor, for the oppressed, that the righteous may be be seen for what they are and that the oppressors may be overthrown essentially. And with that and with some of the, the ponderings that came from reading through the Advent study from the ELCA World Hunger, there, there's much to think about. Um, through the study, they, they start talking about hunger and how often, especially around this time before the holidays, giving ramps up for food pantries, food banks, things like that, that people, that during this time, the season of waiting for, for Christmas, that people feel, feel called and are led to, to give to those pantries so that those experiencing hunger might also be able to experience and get the food they need for for their celebrations at Christmas time or to just be able to live sufficiently. But from there, the the study goes on to ask questions of what what really causes hunger? Is it just because people don't have enough food, don't have enough money to buy food? Often, often it's not just the one issue of lack of food. Often there is so many other compounding issues that when you, when we take time to listen to people's stories, especially those experiencing hungerness, Often there are stories of eviction, of, of trauma, of discrimination, of inequality, of health issues that cost more than expected or, or that came out of nowhere, health emergencies, all of these things that there's not always a support system for many of the people that experience hunger, that experience chronic hunger throughout our, our world and throughout our communities. So to end hunger, we can't just do that with food, is what this is getting at. Um, that it's not just through f giving food that we are able as a society to un end the epidemic of hunger that strikes so many people throughout our world. And I'm going to read this little little excerpt, this little paragraph from here. Hunger and poverty aren't random. While they can happen to anyone, vulnerability to either is not equally shared. Simply put, hunger is not coincidental or accidental. It is a predictable result of policies and practices that reflect a society's choices about who deserves to eat and who is welcome at the table. So with those thoughts, there's again much to much to think about, much food for thought, pardon the pun. But here we are thinking about how we can alleviate some of the the hunger pains of those around us. And I am proud of the people of St. Paul as we journey into this idea of, or this, this hope and reality of starting a food pantry to help alleviate some of the, the hunger within our own community here in Clinton. But then also, Hopefully we can find a way to advocate for changes of policies and, and practices to help alleviate the cause of hunger, not just alleviate the hunger itself, but to make it so that hunger no longer exists, which would be a beautiful, beautiful thing.
as we wait for this expectant future of a better, better future, we're called to help make that future a reality. As we wait for, for God's promises to be fulfilled, we're called to be a part of God's promises here on earth now to help bring about the reality of a better future for those around us. In the face of hunger, what what else can we do but to, to work to feed the people around us, to feed our community, to feed to feed God's children? but also to make it so that God's children no longer need to be fed by, by donations or help or handouts, but that everyone gets what is promised to them from God, that there is the abundance of food. We just are not great at always sharing and getting the food to the people who need it. And this brings me to a thought that also came from, from the study that Martin Luther, who our, our denomination is named after, the Lutherans, that Martin Luther once wrote that every prince, every leader, what have you, should depict a loaf of bread on their coat of arms to remind the people that they are providing for their basic needs is a central responsibility for that ruler, for that leader. And this brought me to, to think about Martin Luther's explanations, um, and especially his explanation on the little section of the Lord's Prayer, where we pray for our daily bread. And Martin Luther believed, and I do as well that when we pray for our daily bread, we aren't just praying for the physical food of bread. We aren't just praying for, for something to help fill our stomach or something to fill our mouths to sustain our own lives, but we're praying for all, all that is needed to, to not just survive life, but to thrive. So we are praying for the things we need daily, we're praying for the food. We're, we are praying for the food, we're praying for the shelter, we're praying for the warmth, we're praying for the clothing, we're praying for whatever is needed in our society to thrive. And not just that, but to, to provide that for all who might not yet be at that point of thriving, that might not be at that point of receiving the daily bread like so many of us are able to have and have received. So as we think about hunger and think about what we need to, to not just survive day to day, but to thrive in our lives, we're called to, to share the abundance that we have, that we experience with those around us, with those in our community, with those in our world, and continue to ensure that, that others don't just survive or make by or make do, but they also are able to thrive as well. And through, through working for advocating for policy changes, and as such, we might help bring this reality of no one hunger, no one hungry in our world to a reality. I wish I could say I believe that that's possible within my lifetime, but I've looked around at our society and it seems like it wouldn't be impossible, but we're here anyways waiting, waiting for for the promises of God to be fulfilled in our in our lives. And we're we're called not just to passively sit and wait, but to actively wait so that this 
these realities might become, so that these, these visions, these futures might become a possible reality, even if it's not in our own lifetime, maybe generations to come, it might be a possibility that it, it's fulfilled. They just, they prom these, these visions of bringing God's, God's fulfilling presence to the world that nobody will be hungry. That would be a beautiful thing to, to witness for sure. And how do we go about to lead this change and all of this? But there's a lot to ponder, a lot of, again, food for thought in these thinking and in this, in the Psalm 72 and in just thinking about our world and our reality and the fact that we're, we're in this, this life together and some days we seem like we know what we're doing. We seem like we got it all going on. And other days we're just trying to figure out what best to do, what best foot to move forward to to bring about real change in our in our worlds. So I will leave you with a few few pondering reflection questions that are provided in this Advent study. So if you wish, you can reread Psalm 72. But according to the psalmist, what makes a good leader? What role can prayer play into the work to end hunger? Why is advocating for policy changes so important? And what policy changes might help people in your community and our community? And what does it mean for governments to be accountable to God for the way they treat people in need? As you take time to ponder these questions and whatever other thoughts might have come, come to you as I felt like I kind of rambled on there for a bit, um, I hope you, you have some time to, to sit in this expectant waiting of Advent and this expectant waiting of a better future. Um, as we gear up for, for our Christmas celebrations and all that is to come in this holiday season, I pray that we remember all, all those around us that might not be as, as fortunate to have some of these things that I know I've taken for granted. And... Yeah, thank you again for joining me during this time. Um, and I will be back next week. So thank you. Hope you all have a wonderful week and hope to see many of you on Sunday or whenever else I can see you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye.